Thank you for joining us here on this very special occasion to celebrate Poshan Se Padhai Tak. And I'm very glad uh, and honored to have Sri Anilji, uh, Dr. Rita, and of course, Shubhra Chatterjee for joining us this afternoon uh, to give us a sense of what is it that the Ministry of Women uh, and Child Development is doing under Saksha Manganwadi and Poshan 2.0. So let me start with you, Anilji. When we say Poshan Se Padhai Tak, we talk about the direction of the Anganwadi system. We talk about uh, the government providing nutrition, which beyond just the PDS, now there is fortified rice, there is millets, uh, there is a holistic nutrition uh, program that has been unveiled under Portion 2.0. So talk to us and talk to our audience here about what is it that the ministry is doing to expand the ambit. It's not just about Portion, but also about Padhai. It's about early education. You see, this program has been around in a truncated form since last uh, 1975, so 49 years. Its 50th year uh, will be next year. So uh, its scope has been expanded big time, uh, transformationally by the present government. It's not merely, you know, basic health services. It's gone up to Padhai. So the idea is that uh, our Anganwadis, you know, at the end of the day, they should also become joyful places of learning where the children, you know, the future generation of this country is prepared to enter the school system at, at a very prepared and mature stage. You know, they are not found wanting, not only in terms of health and nutrition, but also in terms of basic learning. And that learning is stress-free and not based on any rote learning or anything of that kind. So uh, the Honorable, our Honorable Minister last year launched this Project Portion B or Padhai B, both the things. Now, because it's a new step, so we will need to build the capacity of our, uh, uh, you know, organizations who are delivering it. Basically, our Anganwadi workers, helpers, and our supervisors and other persons involved in this massive program. So, more than two and a half million persons are involved. Now, we are uh, we have uh, budgeted a big time this year, next two years more than 475 crores worth of budget for training. So this is going to be rolled out, uh, is already started with NIPSED, uh, our national level institute for uh, children's uh, you know, training programs. Another thing that we are doing is, uh, we are closing down many Anganwadis. We had about more than a lakh of them earlier. They were having only one worker. So if the worker is not present or something happens, then the mini Anganwadi closes. Now we are going to convert all of them along with other Anganwadis into main Anganwadis. So every Anganwadi henceforth from April 1 will have two workers, Anganwadi worker and helper. So even if one falls sick or is not available, then this uh, education program and nutrition programs don't, don't suffer. Then the budget also has been increased, increased from uh, 1,000 per year to 3,000 per year for preschool education kit. So the total budget has gone from 140 crores to 420 crores. So kits are available and children are actively, you know, enjoy themselves and also learn, you know, uh, their motor skills, their cognitive skills, emotional and even aesthetic skills, they get enhanced. Then another uh, pillar of uh, implementing this program, Padhai Tak, we have, uh, you know, gone in for do-it-yourself indigenous toys. Use the resource materials which are available locally. And I, I mean, it can be bangles, newspapers, bat bottle caps, or leaves, rocks, whatever you have, you know, which is locally available. Don't have to go to market to purchase. You can convert them into toys, then maybe even destroy them, reconvert them. So that helps children, you know, build their creative and their aesthetic sense. So these are multiple uh, uh, domain uh, areas, you know, where we are intervening and to implement this more ambitious project. Uh, Dr. Rita, in terms of what Anilji said, obviously the budgets have gone up, but one critical area is training and tracking. So please tell our audience, uh, you know, from the NIPCCD, which you represent, how critical is training and what is it that you're doing to enhance the level of training so that our Anganwadi workers can become better educators? NIPSID, National Institute of Public Cooperation and Child Development. We have been engaged in uh, training of ICDS functionaries since 1975. So maybe that is our key domain area of training what we are all expertised in. 
and uh, with the new program that is the new initiative portion b padhai b which is in the air right we are all uh, working very hard for it and uh, under portion b padhai b uh, i would like to tell a bit of genesis behind it with the 2013 uh, national ecc policy and then the framework and then with coming up of uh, national education policy in place and uh, we had uh, constituted a um, ecc task force by the ministry in 2022 and uh, they had given major recommendations regarding uh, carrying out portion b padhai b and according to that one of the main uh, points what they had suggested that we should have a anganwadi training program of 3 days where we could capacitate them on various aspects of ecc so that we could convert this uh, anganwadi centers to vibrant learning centers right so pbpb has been initiated uh, last year by the honorable minister may 2023 and since then we have already started with the training program and uh, the training program we uh, we are basically based at headquarters at uh, delhi and we have our five regional centers that is we have a pan india approach and through our regional centers we are capacitating all the icds functionaries on portion b padhai b and i would be very happy to say that i think so it is a historic moment for all of us that uh, first time in the country all the icds officials starting from dpo cdpo supervisors and anganwadi workers across the country that is um, all of them are being trained for portion b padhai b and for this uh, we are having a two tier approach for the first uh, approach what we are doing is we are having a state level master trainers program where we are uh, capacitating cdpos and supervisors in addition we are also having state nodal officers on nutrition state nodal officers on ecc all of them being trained on a two day module at nipsit headquarters and its regional centers where we are giving them training so that further they go to the field and the train 14 lakh anganwadi workers uh, shubhra ji how does one ensure because it's a long arc from portion to padhai how do you monitor that long arc keeping in mind all of these four or five broad things which need to which, which is absolutely critical particularly in the early years when we are talking about you know this cognitive development and school readiness and all that uh, we should remember how young children learn they learn through play and that is why you know i am very happy that nipsid has come up with a strong curriculum with more than maybe 150 play based activities because most uh, teachers they do not know how to play with children parents don't know how to engage with children so i think th this is of paramount importance when we make this le great leap from you know from nutrition to padhai i i think we should keep in mind that it should be a play based pedagogy and uh, the, the other thing i wanted to say was uh, we talk of cognitive development but what kind of cognitive development it does not mean learning your numbers or the letters of the alphabet but certain basic processing skills like like observation exploration matching sorting discriminating groupings arranging ordering so these are far more fundamental building blocks to learning and that is what the entire preschool curriculum should be about and i am concerned i while i am very happy that padhai is being extended but it should be that you know we as a society which should be so i am taking your monitoring in a very large sense we should be vigilant to see that you know it is play based learning that takes place in our preschools and anganwadi centers sure uh, anil ji let me come back to you one critical aspect which i guess is important for making this successful is involvement of parents communities so how do you make poshan se padhai more community based almost like a jan andolan if you will Uh, there are multiple activities that are done in a, an anganwadi i mean sports day creativity day anganwadi workers hold meetings toddler graduation things like that you know where parents are proposed to be involved right now also they come there for nutrition and for immunization multiple other things but for these activities also they are uh, expected to be there and anganwadi workers are involving them you know uh, at least once a month then we have some big celebrations like Uh, we talked about it earlier in the earlier module uh, portion ma and portion pakwada where nutrition based activities are celebrated and nutritional habits and all those things so that also becomes part of learning 
And then, of course, uh, you are right, uh, you know, the budgets and equipments and training, uh, they are being taken care of. But we are also involving community and parents big time. That is an integral component of this uh, program. Last, I would also like to say that because some of the children, you know, might be having delayed developmental, uh, you know, parameters. It's possible some of them, you know, need to be further referred to. So those kind of protocols and those kind of things also will be, you know, taken care of uh, uh, through these initiatives. Uh, Dr. Rita, you know, when we talk about, and, and Prime Minister talks about this quite a bit, about the demographic uh, dividend in, in the Amrit Kal, uh, tapping into the young population, uh, if you were to realize India's full potential, one group of citizens that we need to sort of help and also them help themselves is the Divyang category. So please help our audience understand uh, what is being done by the ministry, by the uh, organization that you represent, uh, in helping differently able Divyang people uh, as to how they can also be uh, part of mainstream and contribute to mainstream uh, society. Um, when it comes to Divyang children, I would like to say that uh, at NIPSIT, at headquarters, we have got uh, child guidance centers, adolescent guidance service centers, which take care of uh, Divyang children. And uh, our ministry has already released the Divyang protocol, right, for uh, Anganwadis. And uh, we don't expect uh, the Anganwadi workers, you know, to exactly uh, name the Divyangta or uh, any other thing. But only what we expect them is to diagnose or to screen the children and at least identify symptoms which they could further refer it to health centers or other, other centers. And uh, for that, we have got a disability screening schedule which uh, we'll talk about, uh, which has many questions in it, nearly 21 questions. And uh, by that, you know, one can identify what are the symptoms. And uh, further, the most important part is the referral part. So immediately, I think so now, with Potion Vi Padhai Bhi, every Anganwadi center will have a list of referrals. Exactly if the Anganwadi worker knows even a bit about Divyangta, she can at least refer to the, further to the health center or the diet or other centers so that immediate actions could be taken. And uh, mainly, uh, it is very important in the zero to three age group when she'll be going for home visits. Even if she can identify something in a very early stage, I think so that is very, very important for uh, further uh, delay and uh, that can be taken care of. And uh, through uh, Potion B, Padhai B, we are now collaborating with Nimhans. Nimhans, they have given a video for us. Uh, on uh, Palan, namely Palan, and uh, through that video, we are capacitating all the ICDS functionaries regarding what is Divyangta, what are the type of disabilities, and how they can be at least screened at the Anganwadi centers so that further they can be referred. Uh, Shubhraji, you know, these days, and there is no real uh, urban-rural divide when it comes to this, that even rural children, children from low-income backgrounds are today used to uh, and quite adept at using smartphones and mobile phones. And so their, you know, early development is probably through the, through the mobile phone. So how can Anganwadi workers equip themselves to be able to teach kids who are probably, you know, these days, certainly in urban centers, kids seem to be 24-7 on, on mobile phones. But this is a, almost a, a universal problem, one would imagine. So how does this, how can this problem and this challenge be uh, addressed? Technology is very powerful. And like any other powerful thing, it has a lot of capacity to do good and a lot of capacity to do harm. So on the right side, I would say that what we keep saying to parents also, to everyone, that uh, it cannot substitute, technology can never substitute human interaction. Do not use it as a tool to make your child sit and eat her dinner or to do this task or do that task and make her dependable on technology. Use it by all means very carefully, but it is far more important to talk to your child, to engage with your child, to interact with your child, tell her stories yourself. Also then use technology, and the same goes with the Anganwadi worker. And as I have seen that Anganwadi workers are very savvy the, these days, they use technology well, and I think a lot of very good quality resources can be made accessible to them that they can use, but it should be used judiciously, what I feel. Anilji, what are the best practices that can be sort of replicated, and what is the ministry's focus on trying to develop a template of these successful and repeatable uh, practices. The central government and all the state governments 
budgeting is also joint and every uh, basically state governments are actually the real implementing agencies so uh, every state is free you know right now also they are having uh, their own uh, you know local dishes local uh, you know festivals local ways of uh, imparting uh, uh, basic uh, services so uh, we have uh, nipset they are in the process of uh, doing these studies they keep on doing it or already and uh, they are documented and we have now uh, a very good it platform we would leverage that and we will share uh, the best practices across all domains we are leveraging the cartoon networks and the cartoon literature and technology in spreading the messages of nutrition health and even early education so these kinds of uh, interventions uh, we are proposing to take up so dr rita if you could elaborate a little bit more about content i mean cartoon coalition is one of it but uh, how is the content developed how is it curated and also how do you guard against it uh, not becoming uh, over dependence on technology one of the things that uh, shubhra ma'am referred to this over dependence on technology so how do you guard against that at prison for portion bhi padhai bhi uh, we have uh, used both digital content right for training of anganwadi workers we have got nearly 40 videos so that they, it would be easy for their learning but it does not mean that you know they will be necessarily using it for the children uh, for the children activities i think i think so there should be a mix of outdoor indoor play and uh, it should be more uh, with alphabets language number and interacting with the child one to one interaction so basically it's like um, i can do we can do you do it all and you can do it yourself and when we have uh, come up with the framework for portion bhi padhai bhi we have tried to incorporate each and every best practices of the state so that we don't miss out on anything and uh, for the last day we have kept a session even left to the states so that states have an intervention regarding the best practices what they can share with all others and uh, the way forward further so i think so training and capacity building is the key to any success of any program once we start capacitating our uh, functionaries i think so we portion and padhai nutrition and education can together make a difference for converting this anganwadi centers from kichdi centers or dalia centers to vibrant anganwadi centers uh, shubhra ji again i come back to the point about how does one revive community based learning and what are the best practices that can be adapted to anganwadi centers for encouraging more community based uh, learning i think uh, there is already provision the um, the ministry has recently sent out very detailed uh, you know guidelines on how to conduct ecce days they are primarily meant to you know have more connection with the community and i am talking from practical experience in uttar pradesh i have seen uh, chopals ecce chopals a few and i was really amazed the entire village was there and it was almost like a festive atmosphere and the adolescent girls had decorated the place with balloons and the anganwadi worker took out had taken out all the anganwadi play things and showing that you know how this is not play because there is this always dialogue ki wahan to khel hota hai wahan to padhai nahi hota hai. so she was trying to educate the entire community not only the parents what early learning is all about and they were so interested and some of the parents with with ghungtas like this you know i am trying to, i'm i'm trying you um, to you know it was just to imagine that situation it was so beautiful so vibrant and i think there is a very beautiful african proverb which says it takes a village to raise a child and just not educating the the parents but the entire community is so important because they too have an influence on you know how children on children's learning and everything and typically i think good i have seen good practices in many states uh, in jharkhand in west bengal uh, where uh, in maharashtra where parents come and help the anganwadi workers set up the activity corners with their old sarees the doll doll corner and this another initiative that has been started by the ministry i really like it is revival of indigenous toys indigenous games and do it yourself toys that can bring the community together uh, on that note i'll give the final word to uh, shri anil what is the vision what is the outline for the next 5 years as to how you transform that vision into into more reality yeah the vision is that you know in a few years time our anganwadi should be real uh, play schools place of joyful learning 
where our youngsters are prepared for the school, but there is no stress. And at low cost, local knowledge, local resources are used, and they are reused and recycled. So that is the vision, you know, so that we are able to participate, all the children of this country are able to participate in the Viksit Bharat Yatra, you know, and we have a population which is ready to become productive and useful citizens of this country. So that is the vision and that's uh, we are uh, carrying forward. All right, thank you very much. Can we have a round of applause for Sri Anil Malik, Dr. Rita Patnaik and Shubhra Chatterjee. Thank you very much.